Welcome, trainees, to another issue of Character Creations for Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition. Today I wanted to talk to you about some NPCs that I have created for my game. Twins, actually, and the concept of how they develop so differently even though they are from the same household. Their names, Eris and Ambrosia. Being born to an affluent family in Bravia, the two sisters grew up wanting for nothing. Laws and traditions, though, however, dictate that their lives would be pre-founded for them. Eris, the older, would be the inheritor when her parents pass away, which happened recently in-game. The younger sister, Ambrosia, being expected to either marry for her wealth or seek it herself. She decided to seek it herself, pursuing magic, as they were both raised with magic everywhere around them. She became an academic, and soon was making large strides in the way of history and arcanes. Eris, on the other hand, being used to having the affluent ways of her life, became quite settled into the concept of having people working for her. And because of this, her personality is a bit more dominative than her sister's. This will show up a lot more as I explain the in-game characteristics of both of them. We're going to start off with Eris first. As with any of my games, all of the characters I create have two personality traits to flush out the character and make them feel more realistic. For Eris, you see that she takes insults personally and will take a small insult and make it much larger by, if you do her injury, she will crush you, salt your lands. Very Roman in that concept, and Privia being Greek makes sense. She doesn't like to get her hands dirty, so she does like to sit back and get other people to do the work for her. And that is a good thing, always, for her. Blood runs thicker than water. She is still going to be very devout to her sister, even though the rest of her family is dead. It's just her and her sister. Even if she was the inheritor, she still will defend her sister entirely. And, in fact, the world does revolve around her. She is definitely going to be narcissistic. She is, as you can see, neutral evil. Uh, I did make them both half-elves. Their one parent will be a full-blooded elf, and the other one will be human. I have not decided the means of their death yet, but they are both dead. Uh, that led to them both getting massive bonuses to Charisma. You can see the stats there. Strength 10, Dex 14, Constitution 12, Intelligence 11, Wisdom 14, and Charisma. You'll see a very different spread between the sisters, as they have developed differently, especially in the mental attributes. Skills here are pretty straightforward. She's all about manipulating others into doing her will. Even if she does have money, she doesn't like to part with it easily. So deception, persuasion are very high. She also, being a bard, has high performance. She's not a bard because she wants to perform for money. She's a bard because she wants to perform and have the center of attention. Again, she is a narcissist. I decided to go with the College of Glamour from the new Xanathar's Guide to Everything book because it just fits with her concept extremely well. Being able to charm an entire group of people into doing what she wants, quite literally. Having a lower hit point total does mean that she doesn't like to get involved in combat personally when she can help it. As I said, she doesn't like to get her hands dirty. But she still has a pretty respectable 51 hit points for having such a low constitution. Vicious Mockery is her main attack and only attack that she really has. She may carry a dagger, but will probably rarely use it. Most things I don't have to go over here, as Bard can be found in the Player's Handbook. The things that do need to be covered, though, Ability Score Improvement. I took one from an Unearthed Arcana, Everybody's Friend, because it just fit with her concept very well, and gave her the small boost of Charisma, which helped push her to the 20 when she hit level 8. Having a 20 in Charisma helps both her College of Glamour abilities as well as her spellcasting, which are also focused heavily around manipulations, as you will see in just a moment. Musical instruments, she gets to pick any three. I went with the lute, and the other two, honestly, I'm going to fill in later because I'm not totally sure what I'm going to do for them yet. They're still being developed, and until they actually show up in character in-game, that's the way it's going to be. So here's the spell list. You can see Vicious Mockery, Friends, and Minor Illusion. 
I believe Minor Illusion is something that every bard and person that is good at manipulation should actually have on their bar. Vicious Mockery is just the same way. Friends is an interesting one. A lot of people don't like it because the person becomes hostile with you afterward. If you're going to intimidate them anyway, though, why not throw it on there? After an intimidation, the chances of them not being hostile with you is rather unlikely. So give yourself advantage, get what you need, and then vamoose. Uh, disguise self, unseen servant, command, charm person. You can see these all are fitting with her very narcissistic concept of wanting people to do things for her. I, even Unseen Servant, she's probably too lazy to go fetch her own scotch or whatever she drinks. I haven't quite decided yet. Probably wine, given the area. Detect Thoughts, Invisibility, and Suggestion. I don't really need to explain those. Detect Thoughts, though, is there so she can perfect her manipulations, being able to read exactly what's on the person's mind and heart in order to really delve into their psyche. Uh, same with the next grouping of them, Tongue, Sending, Major Image. Sending is there to keep in contact with her sister because blood runs thicker than anything else and she will always take care of her sister. And Compulsion is, again, one of her little manipulation points. Now, with this character, I do plan on having at least two people that are always with her. Two people that are... call it bodyguards. One, a strong knight-like character. Uh, tanky type person, strong, silent. The other doesn't talk much as well, but tends to hang back in the shadows, a little more deceptive, therefore the underhanded, shady aspects of life that need to be dealt with. But honestly, with the way she is, she'll find the right person for the right job no matter what she has to do to do this. She needs something stolen, she'll find the person to do that. She needs the information, She'll whisper in the right ears. This character is all about subterfuge and getting other people to do the dirty work. Like I said, uh, she's used to being the top dog. Unlike her sister, who grew up in academic concepts and has studied and earned everything. Eris received everything she has just through force of personality and being her as with almost all bards. Of course, an evil bard is always a little more interesting than that. Moving on to her sister. So, Ambrosia. She's academic, as I said. She hasn't gotten as involved with her in-depth everythings as her sister has. She tends to sit down and read more often than she does get out and actually do things. So, as a consequence, she hasn't got as much experience points as her sister, and is level 7 as opposed to 8. However, being an academic, she is a wizard. For her, I decided to go with the Unearthed Arcana Lore Master. Not because it can be broken easily, which it can be broken quite easily. The reason I went with it is because of the... Which one is it? I believe it's Spell Secrets. Um, that it's called. Maybe it isn't. I'd have to look it up exactly. But it's the one that gives advantage in all knowledges. She has been studying her entire life to learn everything she possibly can. So she has expertise in all of the four uh, knowledges. Arcane, History, Nature, and Religion. In character and in game, she's actually already there. Although the characters have only just met her, the players have only just met her. She was formerly working for a dragon who was sponsoring her higher education. Now she is seeking the party to help her continue her education while backing them up in ways that are non combat related. She has, in fact, never been in a fight in her entire life. She has the ability to do all the fighting if she needed to, but she has yet to do it. Personality traits, ideals, bonds, and flaws are yet to be picked, but there are going to be things about focusing in on studies, focusing in on teaching people. She isn't the type of sage that's going to look down on somebody for being less intelligent. She's going to be more of the teacher type, wanting to help 
illuminate the masses to the brilliance and amazing aspects of life in general. You can see her strength, dexterity, and constitution are lower than her sister's because she spent so much time behind a desk rather than outside walking, working, talking. Her intelligence is off the chart. Her wisdom is decent and her charisma still extremely high for being a, well, academic nerd. But even with that, she does have a good slew of abilities to back up her concept as well as spells that will help her escape if the need arises for her to do so. You can see though that she does have quite a few less hit points than her sister. Uh, the hit point pool for a wizard is smaller as well as not having a constitution score. She just does not even think about combat as a legitimate option. However her languages are off the chart. She has I know of those four at least. I believe there was even one more I'd have to look. She also has the ability to cast any of them as, you know, anybody that has the spells to do so, which are pulling up here. Her cantrips. She has Prestidigitation, Maychan, Mending, and Message. These all fit with the concept of being academic. She doesn't have an attack spell. At all. She loves using Mei Chan to grab the sh book off the top shelf, do the writing for her as she's reading a book, you know, various things. Her mind is so in tune with magic, these things are happening without her even realizing she's doing it half the time. Her first level spells, Unseen Servant. Uh, again, she's busy studying, she doesn't want to get up. Illusionary Script, Identify Alarm, and Detect Magic. Uh, these are all, these are all just things that are going to go hand in hand with her continuing her education and learning. Locate objects, detect thoughts in arcane lock. Uh, she doesn't want to be disturbed. She wants to be able to read people's thoughts if because she can't read people very well. And she is not as well versed in that as her sister. And who hasn't lost their glasses at least once? I mean, who wouldn't love to have a locate object spell? Sending. Again, blood runs thicker than water. She is still very attached to her sister. Even if they are miles apart, they keep in contact with each other. Clairvoyance. She, not being a combatant, doesn't mean that she can't aid the party in other ways. Her favored spells, even though she is a lore master, are going to be along the lines of clairvoyance and scrying, things of those natures, as well as transmutation spells. Things that you can show your work with, and that's really what she's all about, and that's why that's there, as well as fabricate. She's about creating things and teaching. Uh, of course, being a wizard, she has far more spells than just those. She tries to collect every single one she possibly can, anything she can get her hands on. These are just the ones that she has learned for the day, or as I put on here, the basically the go-to spells. I'm actually going to be rolling to find out what other spells she has to keep it random. Although, she probably has most of the first level spells that are not combat related. Because if you are a collector, as most of us are, you understand that you need the entire collection. She probably has multiple spell books worth of stuff just piled up. And since she had a dragon backing her up for a while, she has a very large sum of money that she could pull from. Do remember that dragons are not known in my world. They are all hidden as people living their lives. Very, very few people know of the existence of dragons still. Ambrosia would be one of them. So that is the basic of the twins there. Despite growing up in the same household with the same parents and the same values, they've defined themselves in a very unique and different ways, and they affect the world in unique and different ways. Even if they fight themselves, I feel sorry for the person that crosses one of these sisters and causes the wrath from both of them to fall upon them. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up so that I know that you enjoyed it and I can continue to make more of this content for you. Subscribe for more content like this, and until next time, trainees, 
keep learning.